Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorello Show. I'm Jack Benedict. We're going to talk IUP Crimson Hawks football as they ran the record of 7-1 Saturday. Not a good weather day, but a good football day to win it 35 to nothing over again. You know, Coach, we had talked in the last couple of weeks after slow starts for a while. Now you're starting to, you know, get off to a really good start. Kickoff return uh, really gave you a good, when we were holding our breath for a minute right. about the $50,000 deal. That you, yeah, right. You know, that's part of this. But uh, that really kind of set the tone, and then you got up on them early. And uh, it's always great to get that good start, isn't it? Well, I think when you, you, you kind of control the game when you get the lead like that, you know, you, you you, you can do some things on both sides of the ball knowing that you got a two or three touchdown lead that uh, uh, you don't have to worry about every call that you make, et cetera. Kicking game, the same thing. You know, we were up 14-0, had the ball on their 40, fourth and six. So we had the punt fake alert and we took it. Uh, you know, and we, we've been good with it over the last couple of years. I think we're six for six right now on the punt fake. Um, but even if we get stopped there, you're still winning 14 nothing, and you're just giving them the ball on their 35 or 40 yard line. So it was a not a hard decision, you know. It's a, and if it's not there, we don't do it. So, uh, but having a lead it helps when you're up 14 nothing. You, you know, you can do some things on you know in all three phases that maybe you wouldn't normally do if the score was zero zero. Mm -hmm. On the uh, pump, fake, the you know the fake. Uh, everything has to be aligned, doesn't it? Right. And you saw that, huh? Right. You, yeah, you have to have the look that we think we're going to get. If you don't get it, then you don't run it. You know, you just punt it. Uh, the look was exactly the look we practiced mm -hmm. against, and uh, we called it, obviously, and the players automatic it out on the field, and it was there. I mean, it was there. Myers is the type of player you need to execute something like that, Well, too. well he's a former fullback in high school. He was actually a pretty good fullback you know, running fullback in high school. So we have three guys in that shield. Uh, Langdon's a fullback, Myers, and then Damon Lloyd. So uh, we've got two blockers that are uh, athletic enough to, if, you, if something doesn't go right, you, you know, they can adjust to it. But it, it really was exactly the way we drew it up. Mm. You mentioned about Langdon. You start to incorporate him a little right. bit more in the offense. He's got a couple of touchdowns right. for you, but you give the defense another look, too, the old I formation. Sure, and, you know, if you need two yards, uh, it's it, it's a quick, it happens quick. Uh, you know, you're not giving the ball to the tailback who's six or seven yards deep in the backfield. You do have a running back with the ball other than a quarterback sneak. Um, and it's, you know, you're not going to see it a whole lot other than if it's on the one-yard line or if it's third and one. We ran it out in the middle of the field on second and four somewhere during the game, and I was on the phone saying I I'm not really interested in seeing that play on second <laughs> and four. Let if we're going to run the ball, let's give it to our tailbacks. Yeah. But we want it on third and one or less or fourth and one or less or down on the one-yard line. That That's a really good that's play for fun. us. Yeah. Well, you know, Quentin uh, Maxwell had another good game. He was on top of his game. Uh, three touchdown passes on the day. Could have had a couple of more scores too, right? We had two drops, two yeah. drop touchdowns. Simple as that. JoJo dropped one and Dwayne dropped one. And there were two deep ball throws that were right there. I think he threw eight deep balls and he all eight of them were perfect passes. So it it helps. Sometimes it gets to the point where it's two, you know, the, the one with Dom McNeil, Dom made a really good catch, and their DB knocked it out. He, he actually made a really good play. It was a great throw and catch, but their defender made a really good play. The other two were just drops. They were open, and Quentin put them right there. Yeah. Uh, the one with Dwayne, it, it, it's, it appeared that he had control, but maybe when his knee came up, he kicked it out. I don't know. I just, to say. You, you don't know in those situations. Uh, you know, the thing that you got to watch is don't take success for granted. Uh, don't take winning for granted. And when, if you start doing that, then, you know, things like drop passes, miss assignments uh, start to crop up because you think they're just going to automatically happen. Now, the throw is pretty automatic. It's, it, it's been right there on most of the yeah. deep balls all year. Yeah. Uh, on the defensive side, Damon Lloyd comes up with an interception right. and he takes it all the way in the house for 40 yards. And that gave you even more. That even just tacked it on at the right time. Right. Well, we had three explosive plays that weren't on offense. We had the interception return for a touchdown. Damon, great play. Uh, it was a great catch because the ball was thrown pretty hard, you know, in a short area. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the 56-yard kickoff return. And then we had the fake punt for 18 yards for a first down. So we had three explosive plays 
uh, that had nothing to do with our offense. And it helped to score 14 points. Obviously, Damon and then the fake punt led to a touchdown. And, and the opening kickoff led to a touchdown. So really, all three of those plays either scored or helped us score 21 of the 35 points. We did leave probably 21 out there on the two deep balls. And, <clears throat> excuse me, one series we had it going and we just snapped the ball too soon. You know, we had a play that probably would have got us down inside the 10-yard line. Mm -hmm. and it was third and five. And we would have went for it, but we ended up losing seven yards because we had to recover the fumble because the ball was snapped too soon. Uh, it was just a mis-execution. So we probably left three touchdowns out there on okay. Saturday. Other than uh, the obvious in Maxwell and Lloyd and, and uh, Brown, uh, how about some of the players that graded well for, in the win over Gannon? Well, Carter had a great kickoff return, made about three tackles on kickoff coverage, had the touchdown. Uh, even like to play late in the game, you know, third down, we don't want to give them the ball back and go out and play defense at the end of the game. We throw them the little drift screen, and there's not a lot of room into the boundary there, but he still finds a way to make a first down. Kelly does a great job, you know, blocking. He has a choice to block one or two guys. Well, it's kind of 50-50 who to block. Whether he blocks the right one or the wrong one, he does a good job doing it, and it gets us the first down, and we don't have to play defense there at the end of the game. So we can preserve the shutout. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he just, he's, he played really well. Our offensive line played very well. Uh, we had a couple breakdowns in protection. We were actually in max protection. You know, I was kiddingly saying this morning, I said, when we have a six man protection Saturday, we had no trouble. But when we went into a max protection, the quarterback was getting hit. We didn't give up any sacks, but we took, Quentin took a hard hit, and so did uh, Jalen. Uh, so, you know, but offensively and then defensively, our corners are playing really good. Streeter's playing really good. Stevens is playing good. Uh, and, you know, our defensive line is, is not, uh, you know, making a ton of big plays, but Fisher's the guy that's kind of taking his game to another level with two sacks. And uh, mm -hmm. he's being a guy that's been very hard to block for the opponents. I think we asked you this on the post game I observed up there, and I don't know much, but I see where Tillman, you were flipping him all over right. the place so that they, you know, if they're going to double team him, right? Right. You got to find them let if we them move them right. Exactly. Yeah. Let them figure out where he is, right? Yeah, and we dropped him once or twice in pass coverage. But, you know, we don't really like to do that because he's our best pass rusher, but. He really does a great job in coverage and covers a lot of area. The play that they hit uh, for a first down on third and 14, the, the quarterback was getting ready to throw it and Tillman would have picked it. And he just caught himself and double clutched it and then he made a low throw where the guy caught it. But Tillman was in perfect position. Amendola was a little late getting to the hash mark. But, uh, you know, we're trying to move him around enough that the offense does the offenses don't know exactly where he's going to be. Mm -hmm. You've had the opportunity with the way the scores of the games have gone to incorporate some other people on the offensive line, get some of these young guys right. back. That's good experience for them, and it appears, uh, you know, that they're doing a pretty right. good job. Well, we played four tackles Saturday with uh, McLean DeJua being the fourth tackle. Daryl was the third tackle. Matt Guvermont started, and he also played some guard. McAllister played a little bit Saturday and, was and good. got through it pretty well. So, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're like eight guys right now that we feel comfortable moving around, and it's probably one or two more than we've had here in a while. Yeah. Uh, Seton Hill, let's talk about Seton Hill. They won two in a row after mm -hmm. not having won any. In the, or they have a new coach in Dan Day. Right. Uh, tell me if you see anything does it look like a, a different Seton Hill team, or are there similarities? I think the, it's a little both. I okay. know that's a contradiction, but, you know, they do some things offensively where they, like we call it the reindeer games. They, they were a big reindeer game team in the past, and they're still, I think, 11 of the first 12 plays against uh, Edinburgh were formations that you don't normally see. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to deal with that. Uh, defensively, they're, they're, they're more simple than they've been in the past. You know, that's where they be, they've changed a little bit on defense. Uh, you know, they're playing better. Uh, they, 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 you know, aren't making as many mistakes as they have in the past. I think they're minus three or four in turnover ratio. Uh, but they're not, uh, not getting a lot of negative plays on offense. They're, they're trying to help their defense out a little bit. You know, in the past, they were so fast, hurry, hurry on offense. 
that their defense would be on the field 15 or 16 series as a game. And, you know, they weren't real good defensively. So if you're giving up points on 75% of the time you're out there, you're giving up 50 points. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've done a good job, I think, uh, correlating their offense and defense together. And they had a nice run there. They had two really good wins in a row back to back. Started off good against Edinburgh, got up 7 nothing. A couple things went against them. And uh, then in the second half, Edinburgh kind of put them away. So uh, it'll be, you know, interesting to go up there this Saturday and we're expecting them to play good and give us, you know, their, their best shot mm -hmm. because most people do. Yeah, they do commit a lot of penalties. They have like 21 more right. than their opposition, though. I think a lot of the penalties they're, they're getting, their, their offensive line is young. They do do so many different things on offense that that, that may be leading to some of the penalties mm -hmm. that they're getting. But they do confuse the defenses a lot. That's why they do the certain things that they do. So, uh, you know, I think our answer really is to be even more simple on defense when we play teams that do a lot of things uh, that are unconventional on offense. Mm -hmm. Going into this game, looking at, you know, a team that has only two wins, you guys are 7-1. to one, But what do you feel that your team has to do a little bit better? Well, I think we've got to stop the run better. We, we gave up four or five runs Saturday of over 12 yards that we, we just can't happen. And it was really on 50% on of them, it, it was just our guys not playing the play right. You know, it had nothing to do with uh, we were in a bad defense or we got blocked really bad. Uh, we just didn't fit it up right. And we, we, we've got to stop the... Uh, the, the runs that are coming out there. We had four or five on Saturday. We've done a pretty good job in the past game, at least statistically. I think Saturday we only gave up one uh, explosive play of over 20 yards in a pass game. Now they dropped a touchdown pass. So, you know, there's some games on defense where if we give up 24, we say, eh, we really should only gave up 10. This week we got a shutout, but we probably should have gave up 14 <laughs> because there was one play they had us on and they didn't execute. And the other play, they just dropped. They had a touchdown. Yeah, that was Cox uh, on that yes, play over down the middle. middle of the field. So uh, they matched up a pretty good play against the defense. The, the check that we were in, and then the other play, we didn't get the. You know, one of the guys didn't get the check communicated to him, so we busted a coverage. But uh, you know, I think defensively, if, if you said one thing, we got to do a better job stopping a run. We're doing a really good job on third down and getting off the field when we get him in third down. Offensively, we've just got to to, to really clean up our execution. We had three or four plays where the ball was on the ground Saturday, uh, you know, and it's not supposed to be on the ground. Um, two of them were fumbles that we recovered. The other one was, was a forward pass, was called a forward pass, which was, a, was the right call. And, uh, you know, just some of the things protection-wise we got to clean up. Uh, I think, you know, offensively throwing the ball, we're getting the ball vertical and down the field. Uh, we are running the ball with success. People say, well, you only ran for 130 yards or whatever. Well. Our top three running backs had 120 yards on uh, six, you know, I think it was 16 carries. So we averaged over six yards a carry with our top three running backs. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes statistics don't really tell the, no. the, the true tale. I, I, I would like to say probably just do a better job in protecting the quarterback. And it's not so much the O-line, it's everybody. Uh, the tight ends when they're in protection, the running backs when they're in protection, you know, against different blitzes, et cetera, et cetera. The quarterback maybe could do something a little better in, the, in those situations. So uh, we're not taking a lot of sacks, but he, he, our quarterbacks both got hit six or seven yeah. times Saturday, and we, we can't have that. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, any particular improvement you need in any of the uh, special teams? Well, we, we, the two areas we, we concentrated on last week, we, we made big jump in. Our kickoff coverage, they averaged getting the ball on the 12-yard line after every kickoff. Now, they had a couple penalties. But their penalties were reasons why we didn't tackle them inside the 20. Mm -hmm. And then our kickoff return, unfortunately, we've been having too many kickoff returns because we haven't been playing as good a defense as we like. Well, Saturday, we played good enough defense. We only had one return, but we ran it back for 56 yards. So those are the two areas. I think our punter's got to get it going a little bit. I think, uh, you know, he's into his eighth game now uh, as a freshman. He, he, you know, he's got the experience. we we got to get a little bit more out of him. And... Uh, we haven't tried a lot of field goals, but we have missed the last two field goals we've tried. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just tie some things down. Our coverages have been good. Uh, the one punt return we, we, we screwed up that, you know, Dwayne tried to pick up a bouncing ball that he should never have done. So we got a turnover there that should have never happened. 
But, uh, you know, we just got a lot of things, a lot of little things to clean up that will help us down the road. All right. Okay, 7-1 and one going into Seton Hill. Good luck on Saturday, a noon kickoff. We hope uh, a lot of fans will make the trip, short trip, and we'll, well go, go from there. Huh? It's like a home away game, so it to is, speak. Yeah. You know, 40-minute drive. So, uh, yeah, it'd be nice. It's supposed to be a nice day, a little chilly, but we'll see. We, we've really been lucky there. Yeah, well, other than Saturday. Saturday I mean, wasn't, yeah. But, you know, last time we played, you know, we – played for seven hours and had four <laughs> lightning delays. So I think Saturday I, wasn't that bad. I think I remember that. Right. right. <laughs> Good luck, Tort. Thanks, Jack. All right, that's Coach Tort. It's a noon kickoff in Greensburg against Seton Hill coming up Saturday. We hope to see you there. Be watching, be listening. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.